It has been almost a year since historic flooding took over people's yards, basements, and lives and caused more than $200 million in damage across Wisconsin. This summer, those memories have neighbors who live at the edge of Madison's lakes on edge as they watch the water creep closer to their property lines. They're asking what local leaders are doing to protect them. Leah Linscheid has their call for action. I've always just been a fan of being out on the lake. It's not exactly an unpopular opinion when you live here. We like to enjoy the water. We have two kayaks. You know, we get out as much as we can. We like to swim off the pier. In case you needed another reason, there are a couple behind why Topher Christensen chose to return to his home city of Madison and buy along Monona Bay. But in the five years he's been back, something seems to be creeping up on him constantly. My pier has become a swim-up bar for the ducks. The water level's gone up so much, Topher decided to sell his motorboat. He can't get it out of the bay anymore. If you want to get out to the larger part of the lake, you can't really go under the, the main bridge anymore because the water's so high. Even his kayaks can't escape under the railroad bridges. In last year's historic flooding, his yard was one of many sustaining some damage. You can see where my good grass stops and my bad grass starts. That's where the water came to. The question Topher has is also something we've heard before. What is the county doing, you know, for people like me in the short term to alleviate any issues that might come? The county has an obligation to taxpayers to help them take care of their property, and this seems like an issue that they could solve pretty easily just by lowering the lake level at the beginning of the season. We can do it on paper at this point if everyone could agree on what they should be on paper, but in reality, it's kind of a different situation. This isn't the first time we've reported on rising lake levels and what's being done about them. Here's a quick recap, according to city engineers. Back in 1979, the DNR set the lake levels, and they're still in place today, despite lots of changes to the landscape, more rain events, and two attempts since 2000 to change those levels. The written lake levels right now are as they stand, we're unable to fulfill those. Consider this. The range of acceptable lake levels set by the DNR is no bigger than the size of my cell phone, about six inches. And Dane County can't operate within that range right now. So lowering lake levels isn't really an option. Currently, the county is doing the best that they can to maintain the lake levels within that range, but we have too much water entering the system. Aside from too much rain and not enough room, changing lake levels would disrupt a host of other issues, from peer levels for residents and businesses to ecosystems at the nearby Cherokee Marsh. Instead, the county's working along the Yahara chain of lakes to get the water to move quicker. It's also reviewing recommendations from a task force on studies, dam management, and more. We asked city engineers what residents can be doing to protect themselves. First and most obvious, prepare ahead of time. For example, purchase plastic sheeting before a major rain event. During last year's flooding, all of the stores in the nearby vicinity ran out of the sheeting because so many people needed it to wrap up the sandbags to make sure that they are more impermeable. Second, take advantage of the resources out there. The city provides weekly flooding assessments, sandbag information, flood preparation tips, and a host of other helpful maps. Third, consider flood insurance. Most folks don't know that flood insurance from FEMA is actually available for people at a very low cost when you're outside of the floodplain. Since folks aren't allowed to develop within a floodplain, this covers most people in Madison. Back in Topher's backyard... I had a neighbor two doors down who just kind of paid a lot of money to raise his shoreline two feet. He's not the only one with opinions on what to do next. He's just not waiting for, you know, government to take action. He took action himself. This is not an issue that we can wait, you know, four to five years to figure out. With this call for action, I'm Leah Lynchide for News 3 Now. We have a host of information, city and county links, and more tips on how to protect your home from future flooding at our website, channel3000.com. And if you have a consumer question or complaint, our call for action volunteers can help with that. They are here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And you can reach them at the number there on your screen, 608-270-2833. Lots of sunshine.